So we just did a video on creating a character in Path Builder 2nd Edition, and I wanted to show you how you can bring that character into Foundry. There are various importers that do it. However, I did get notified that sometimes they don't keep up and you can get a lot of broken characters that way. If you choose to use them, that's perfectly fine, but I just wanted to show everyone how to basically bring a character manually into Foundry. So we're gonna go ahead and cover that in this particular video here. So my name is Don, I'm trying to be the Sci Strategist, and let's go ahead and get into it. So before we get into the actual import, I wanted to show two things. The first thing, show what my Foundry install is basically at. So you can see what the build is, as well as a Pathfinder 2nd Edition version. And the other thing I wanted to show is that although I do have a bunch of modules, I'm doing this on a totally clean install, and that way it will be the most universal version. There are various modules that you could do in order to make it easier for you to find things. However, this is a totally clean install, so everyone should be able to do it. And the second thing I wanted to show is, once again, we built a character on Path Builder, and we have that video is kind of on the rotation, but I wanted to show you how, if you didn't want to do it from this screen, or if you just had a piece of paper and you wanted a piece of paper, how you could get that. So what I will show you is that you can go ahead and click on the menu button and then go to character sheet PDF. When you hit character sheet PDF, you're going to get a warning that says your equipment does not fit into the slots available. I'm going to show you what that means in just one second, and it's not that big of a deal. Go ahead and hit accept. So it's going to go ahead and create a character sheet for you. You can print this off, you can keep it as a PDF, or you can just refer to it as you're building your character. I do suggest that you do Path Builder first. At least I find that's what works best for me. Now, what I did want to show you about the equipment is, as you'll see on the character sheet that Path Builder produces, and in truth, the character sheet from Paizo, is the inventory is not very big. And so it basically told you that it couldn't fit everything that you had selected, even though it was just the cleric kit, you couldn't fit everything that you selected on this particular character sheet. Now let's go ahead and get into the character build. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'm going to create an actor. And when you create actor, you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. We're just gonna leave it blank because we didn't necessarily name the actor that we wanted. However, you can make it anything you want. You can make it a player character, an NPC, hazard, loot, familiar, a party or vehicle. We're going to stick with player character and we're going to go ahead and create that new actor. You're going to see the character sheet come up. For some reason, my particular version always starts with new actor two. I don't know where new actor one is, but I always start out at new actor two and we'll leave it like that for a second. From the character we already built, we have our ABCs. We have a human, we have a background of field medic, and we have a class of cleric. So let's go ahead and kind of get those things in. So we'll start with our ancestry. You click on the magnifying glass and a little window here will show up all the ancestries. Now we chose human. I want to show you two things really quick. If you were to go ahead and just click on human, thinking that would fill, it doesn't. It brings up a box that explains what a human is, which is good to know. However, it's not what we want. What you actually need to do is drag human over to your ancestry, and now we're human. Now we'll go ahead and get the background. Now we decided it was a field medic, so I'll just go ahead and start typing in here, and we see a field medic, and we're going to go ahead and drag that in there. And then class for the C of our ABCs. The class we chose was cleric. So once again, if you click on it, it'll bring up a window that'll describe a cleric for you. But what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to get that into the class. So we'll go ahead and drag that over. You'll notice because it's a cleric, we have to select a deity. So we are going to select Ioma Day and hit save. And we need to select a doctrine. We were going with War Priest for our particular build, and we're going to go ahead and stick with that. Now, you do see one other box up here, which was a heritage, and we chose a versatile heritage for our character. So we're going to go ahead and click on that, do versatile heritage, and drag it over. And it's going to ask for our first level general feat. We picked this particular heritage specifically so we could get armor proficiency. And we'll hit save. 
And now we have this upper box already all filled out. And we'll go ahead and get rid of all these sidebars that we use to drag things in. Now, the next thing I wanna do in this main screen is go ahead and set our attribute modifiers. So what you would do is you would hit that edit button and you can see it's highlighted in yellow. We'll go ahead and click that. And what we chose were strength and constitution for our ancestry boost. For our background, we decided to do field medic. So we're gonna do constitution and we are going to do strength. And then for our free boost, we are going to go ahead and select strength Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom. We're going to go ahead and click Complete. And now you're going to see that our attribute modifiers are all set up. And that is basically our main page. We have the gender pronouns, which was they, them, and age, I believe we did 23. Ethnicity, nationality, if you would like to do that, go ahead and feel free to fill those out. But let's go ahead and finish up level one and make sure we have all our feats done. In order to do that, you would need to go over and click on the Feats button. If you click on Feats button, it does a really nice job of listing them out and showing you what you picked, but you're gonna see an empty slot. And I'm glad there's an empty slot because then we can kind of show you how to fill these. So you click on the magnifying glass and it'll open a compendium. The ancestry feat we picked was Natural Ambition. So we'll go ahead and click down and drag it over to that ancestry feat. And it's gonna go ahead and populate that, but we need to select our first class feat. And what we selected was the reach spell. So we'll hit the reach spell and we'll go ahead and hit save. And now you see all our first level feats are taken care of. Now the next big one I wanna cover is spells. Cause spells, especially for a cleric is pretty involved. And I kind of wanted to show you how to do a font. I don't know if there's a specific rule of how to do a font, but I'll show you how I do a cleric font. So we'll go ahead and go over to the spell casting tab. You can see it's not populated at all. So if you go ahead and hit add spell casting entry, we can go ahead and kind of set everything up for what it should be for a cleric. And we'll go ahead and do is and we'll hit create. So you'll see we have spaces for cantrips and we have spaces for what our ranked spells are. Now, one thing to pay attention to, because you might get a little frustrated if you don't, is make sure you hit the spell preparation button. And that allows you in order to kind of fill up what your spells are. Now, there are other ways to fill this. You can open a compendium in order to drag things in here, but you can just go ahead and hit this open spell browser button and it's going to bring up a window over here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this because I would like to get all the spells that are available, but we have divine and we have all our ranks set. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our cantrips and do guidance. And we'll go ahead and just drag that over here. And then our next cantrip was Forbidding Ward. And we'll drag that over. And then our next cantrip was Light. And we can drag that over. I'm gonna be doing this, you're gonna hear me say and drag that over a few times. Divine Lance. And then our last one was Detect Magic. And then we have our cantrip set up. Easy as that. Now let's go ahead and do some of our spells. So we did Bless. And it's going to work the same way, but you're going to see when I drag it over, it's going to go ahead and put it in that ranked slot. I'm going to do Fear because those were the ones that we chose when we were building that character. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw heal in here just because it'll make it easier for when we do the font. And that is basically the pool of spells that we can cast. So for cantrips, we have basically five slots. So we'll go ahead and type that in there. And we have two first rank slots. Now I'm not entirely sure why that keeps popping over there, but we're gonna go ahead and drag these spells in. So we'll drag a spell and we'll just leave it over there while we drag. Divine Lance, Detect Magic, and those are our cantrips and we had Bless and Fear. Now there are a couple ways that you can go ahead and do your font. One way that you could do it easy enough is to literally add a spell there, drag it in, 
and continually add four. I don't particularly like doing it that way, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it and change this down to two just to get rid of that extra spot. I like adding a totally separate spellcasting entry, and it'd be the same type thing where you need to do, have it all set up for basically a cleric, and then once again, hit spell preparation. And for this one, I'm going to open the spell browser and we're gonna put in heal. And drag that there. And we'll go ahead and close the spell browser and we'll close this one off too because we already have that one done. So what I will do is a font basically has four spell slots. So I'm gonna add four spell slots. And you can go ahead and drag your spells and fill up the empty slots. And then what I'll do afterwards, just so I remember later what everything is, I clear this out and I type in cleric font. So I'm aware of what it is. And as I level, I can go ahead and change the rank. And then what you can do, you'll see that there are cantrips still show up. There's a button right here that says toggle visibility of spell ranks without slots. Well, I don't need cantrips because this is my cleric font. So if I click that, you'll see that the cantrips kind of go away. And then the only thing that is visible is the cleric font. So it's very easy for me to see. Let's go ahead and do some inventory stuff. So we'll close this one out. And now you can see we basically have our inventory, but it's totally empty. So you always start out with 15 gold for a new character. That's just how it works. The GM could do different if they want to run a more Spartan campaign or if they want to run a more generous campaign, but 15 is usually where it starts. So you could go ahead and click the plus button and give yourself 15 gold and then subtract as you go to buy things. However, for me, I find the easiest way since I go through Path Builder first and it calculates the cost for me is I just go ahead and make sure that I can afford what I want to do with Path Builder and then get the stuff in Foundry and reduce the gold coins later. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But once again, you could do it any way you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and start with the weapons. So with the weapons, we know we had a dagger. So what you do is you go ahead and you drag it over to weapons and shields. And then we also had a long sword. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you drag it over. And now you have your dagger and long sword. Now you can go ahead and start doing armor and consumables. And we'll go ahead and do that as well. So we'll do, we had studded leather armor. So studded leather armor, once again, click down and drag it over to your armor slot. And we had a wooden shield. and drag that to weapons and shields. And then I also want you to go ahead and go ahead and click on kit. And then you can type in kit here and you'll see we have all the class kits that we saw on Path Builder and you can see in player core. We're gonna go ahead and select the cleric class kit and we'll drag it over. And you'll see that that totally populates everything in the class kit. Now, one other thing we have to do is we have to do our proficiencies. So let's go ahead and kind of click through and do our proficiencies. So what we basically had is we had a trained athletics. We had trained diplomacy. We had trained intimidation. We already have the medicine from being a field medic and we already have religion. Now you notice one thing that isn't in here because of a field medic, we should get the warfare lore. So for lore skills, what we can do is go ahead and hit add. And it's going to add a new lore. And then we can go ahead and type in warfare lore, if I can type correctly, and then go ahead and hit trained. So let's go ahead and click through our character and make sure we have everything done. On our main tab, we have our main things done. We have our ancestry, our background, and our class, as well as all the details, all the additional stuff, our attribute modifiers, deities, heritages. So we're pretty much all set there. You just go ahead and set up whatever you would like in these particular things as far as a description of the character. And then we move to our next tab, which is our actions. Our actions are kind of here 
the things you can do during battle, how you do your strikes. We can go ahead and draw our long sword and we can have our wooden shield in one hand, even though you do have to raise it for it to count. And then you'll see we have our strikes all set up and everything like that. We have actions. If you want to add actions here like aid or battle medicine or things along those lines, you can go ahead and browse for those and drag them on here. And that way it's a little bit more visible for you to see without having to search for things as you're using them. Then we'll go ahead and go to inventory. Once again, we have everything that we bought and then we need to go ahead and set up how much money we have left. So basically we would have seven gold and six silver. So let's go ahead and add those. So we have seven gold and six silver once we do all the math for what we bought. And you can see that that is added right here as well as part of our treasure. We have our spells all set up, including our cleric font. We didn't do anything with crafting. And then we go to our proficiency tab and we can see that's all set up. We go to our feats and we see our feats are all set up. Then we have the other things, effects. This would be if we had conditions or boons or curses or those kind of things would show up here, a biography, which I think you should definitely fill out. It definitely helps a GM determine how to play your story. And then if you did Pathfinder Society, that would be the last tab. So now we have a complete first level character built up. Now let's say we want to level the character. Because we're doing a cleric, let's go ahead and just go to level three so we can see how the new spells would show up. But generally speaking, all you do is you change your level here and you'll notice that your hit points have increased. You will have to go through and change your armor and do your inventory, but you're generally gonna be doing that as you're playing anyways. But one thing I did wanna show you is that if you go to spell casting, you're now gonna see that you have that second rank spot. And you also are going to need one more spot for your first rank. So we can go ahead and change this to three. And we can change this to two. You will still need to go to spell preparation and fill your new second level spells and first rank spells in if you would like, but you can go ahead and do what you did before and just drag spells in and go ahead and fill up your new spell book. So we can go ahead and open up the spell browser and make sure we have second rank selected and we can go ahead and search for our spells that we were gonna add. The first one was Dispel Magic. We can go ahead and drag that over. And the other one we selected was Warrior's Regret. And we can go ahead and drag that over. And then we go ahead and close out the compendium and just go ahead and drag these into the empty slots. And now you basically have your spells all set up and ready to go for level three. Then we can go ahead and check our feats. So you're gonna see that we have a level two class feat, level two skill feat, and a level three general feat that we need to populate. So let's go ahead and hit browse kind of bring it over the side so it'll be easy for us to drag it into once we get it. And for second level, we had selected War Priest Armor. We go ahead and drag that in. And we can go ahead and browse under Skill Feats. And then we can do Intimidating Glare because that's what we had selected. And then we'll go ahead and add our General Feat and the general feat that we wanted to add at level three was group coercion. And now we basically have a character all set up for level three. And you can go ahead and do this as you continue to level. Now creating a character in Foundry, you could do it from the start if you wanted to. However, I do like the ease of using Path Builder 2E, but to each their own and there's nothing wrong with building a character fully in Foundry. It's definitely doable. It's not that hard. I just tend to find Path Builder a little bit easier. But I do hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell. But whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks.